come here to join a research project on the contract farmings uh, together with uh, four countries, uh, Myanmar, Thai, uh, Cambodian and Laos. Can you tell me more about your project? Uh, the project is to, to focus, the purpose is to focus on how the contract farming uh, can benefit to the poor, rural poor. And the study uh, focus on uh, rice and uh, sugar contract farming. The sugar contract farming, we focus on two countries, Laos and Thailand because they have uh, more experience on uh, these contract uh, farming models. And Myanmar and Cambodia, we focus on rice contract farming because it fit to the, our government to promote rice export in the region. And we found this uh, case study can be elaborated and see the uh, good uh, how the mechanism are work and impact uh, livelihood of the people in rural areas. The, the key message to the policy maker is to uh, promote contract farming, but to engage all key stakeholders together to discuss uh, what are workable and what are not workable. And we want to see the role, the more role of the governments to uh, to play as a media mediators to as a facilitator to to gather all stakeholders to to be involved and in helping the poor farmers. Well, it's a project that uh, focuses on two provinces in the Philippines. It's uh, uh, focusing on the implications of uh, climate change. Interlac and Pangasinan, these are two major rice producing provinces in the Philippines, but they are highly vulnerable to climate change hazards. So we are looking to uh, looking at um, what are the possible impacts on their livelihood and income. And we have climate modeler to, uh, who did some um, climate change projections and estimates on the impacts on rice yield in, in, in this um, farming community. So uh, they have different um, projections for the two provinces. In Tarlac, for example, it was a projected that there will be more pronounced rainfall during the wet season and drier dry season. While in Pangasinan, uh, there will be more rainfall throughout the year. And as it is now, uh, the farmers are already experiencing severe losses from climate hazards. And with these projections, then the risk would be further. So uh, something has to be done about it. We, uh, we look uh, at the capacity of uh, not only of the households, we also look at the capacity of local government units. So it's just like matching the supply and demand. We know that uh, local government units cannot provide everything. And uh, so it's important that they know how to prioritize. And by prioritizing, uh, they should know what the community needs first and foremost. So we do a capacity, the weaknesses of the households, and at the same time we look at the capability of the local government units. So our research uh, studied the, the fish trade from Cambodia um, to Laos, to Thailand, on the Mekong. Um, so many studies have been done on these uh, this fisheries, but we wanted to give a new angle to the study, uh, talking about the people putting a human face uh, on this trade and studying how many uh, jobs directly or indirectly depends on this fish trade. So our study uh, found that uh, more than 20,000 people uh, depends directly on, uh, on this fish trade. So fishermen, uh, traders, exporters, uh, fish processors in the three countries, but also much more uh, employments indirectly related to the trade, trade such as uh, ice maker, ice box seller, uh, truck drivers, etc. So uh, we got evidence through other studies that the, the fish stock is decreasing on the, on the river. So if the fish disappear, then it's more than 20,000 people that would lose uh, their job, which represents more than a half of their yearly income. So it's really important. So I think one of the main challenge to have all these uh, stakeholders sitting at the same table and talk about uh, this fishery trade is that this fishery trade is directly uh, linked to other 
let's say, more sensitive issues such, such as hydropower development on the Mekong. We know that it's a really sensitive issue between the three countries. So um, it, it might be one challenge to, to be able to open the dialogue on also the, the fishery, fishery trade among the, the three countries. Um, and also, but I think we will manage that through our, our findings, we really need to raise awareness uh, to the policymakers that these fisheries are important, economically important, and that uh, the value, the economic value of this fishery can balance other development on the river, and this needs to be fully assessed. Yes, our project is on the, on the climate change uh, cost adaptation costing and planning, and it's, it calls the participatory social returns on investment. And uh, we tried to test the methodology because the methodology was the was developed by uh, Ox Oxford uh, universities and uh, in in UK we tested in in Africa last year and this this year we tested in um, we tested in uh, Vietnam and Laos to see if they can be transferable to the uh, to the local context and also to the national uh, partner or not. If we use this kind of the, um, approach and try to learn uh, what uh, what the uh, the local local farmers they, uh, they they think about their future and based on their vision in the future and then uh, and then how and what they are going to do in order to uh, arrive to where they want in the future, say, 15 years. And then it's quite uh, interesting, and then um, and then quite responded positively by the local uh, people because uh, they are excited, uh, excited about uh, um, about uh, their future, and also based on their in internal strength to to build it. Actually, we did a greenhouse gas inventory of tourism sector in both the cities. And the um, uh, major finding was transportation was one of the highest emitter of greenhouse gas in both of the cities. So based on that, we took uh, we developed mitigation of options together with different boundary partners, how to reduce the carbon uh, dioxide emission from transportation, and at the same time, create uh, look for opportunities for creating clean and decent jobs for local people. In Vietnam, it was um, we were trying to promote uh, garden houses. They are like very traditional houses, which can be used for tourism purpose. At the same time, because they have the highest uh, income generating potential, both for the garden owners and also for local people. So that was one of the uh, mitigation option we chose for reducing the carbon dioxide emission.